Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 214. Today I'm going to talk about the Council of Verona. Uh, this is a release from Crash Games. It was on Kickstarter a few months ago. A uh, quick turnaround on the release there. Uh, it plays two to five players and says 15 to 60 minutes. And that basically just depends on how many games of it you want to play. You could play one game and be done and it take about 15 minutes or you could play a series of of games, add up points from one game, maybe just do best out of seven, a best out of five, or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of a love lettery type of game where you have a very small deck of cards. You're going to play a couple of cards and try to sort of bluff or, you know, kind of throw off your opponent one way or the other what your intentions are. Uh, but it's very different than Love Letter, definitely not a clone, but it definitely fits in that sort of micro game uh, vein. And the theme is Romeo and Juliet. Um, but it's more of a Montague versus Capulet idea and Romeo and Juliet are featured in the game but they're kind of a almost unfortunate sideshow to sort of the manipulation and you know kind of the politics or whatnot that's going on. So let me show you how it works and I'll come back and tell you what I think. So you can see pretty much all of the components that are going to be involved in a game of Council of Verona. You've got here two cards. You've got a council card and an exile card. And these are basically two zones uh, that you're going to be playing cards to. You don't even actually need these. You can just kind of designate areas on the table. But these are handy to help differentiate those. Now each player is going to get a set of these wooden discs in their color. And you can see they're sort of single-sided. Uh, now what I've done is actually, uh, based on recommendations of a note that was left in the box, is I have not put the stickers on here. Uh, basically, I will probably screw that up and the stickers will be just enough shifted and I have a, a particular player in my group that will definitely eyeball the position of the sticker and that way he will always know that the yellow four is you know this disc based on how you know minutely I've misaligned the sticker. So I'm choosing to play without them. I think most players can go ahead and attach them but I'm just going to leave them off. So you're going to have these face down here. You've got different uh, numbers and based on the number of players you're going to retain uh, these different values here. Now this game also comes with the poison expansion and you can see here we've got a little vial of poison as well as sort of a mortar and pestle which is an antidote. Now I'll explain how these work uh, towards the end of the walkthrough here uh, but for just the basic game you're just going to play uh, with these number of values there. And then the game comes here with a small deck of cards and you can also have uh, for five players uh, you will put these cards in but I've taken them out of the deck now just for pretend and uh, this particular copy actually came with a zombie uh, Romeo and Juliet which is kind of interesting because you know in the play they die. Uh, now these are the same uh, special abilities as the Romeo and Juliet uh, in the basic deck they're just in there for fun. And the game also comes with a uh, player aid for each player and this is handy uh, especially for your first game or two uh, to keep in mind what might be done to you and done to the board and what kind of to expect and shows you all the different special abilities uh, on the different character cards. So to start the game before you actually get to playing any cards you're going to go through a draft phase and that's going to vary based on the number of players uh, but basically you're going to end up with four or three cards or maybe even five uh, in your hand and you're going to basically try to plan your strategy. Now for a first play this can be you know a little bit difficult but uh, thankfully the game only takes about 10 minutes or so and then you can definitely see how the different characters interact even from just an initial play. So after you've drafted uh, your cards then you're going to start playing cards out to either the council or to the exile. And so there's a couple of things that can happen when you play a card. Now, a lot of the cards have what's called an agenda, and that basically defines whether or not this card is going to score points. So this is basically a rule that Juliet here will follow. So if Juliet and Romeo are together, then she's going to score. So let's say we'll play here to exile, and then maybe the following player goes, oh, okay, so Romeo's agenda is if Romeo and Juliet are together. So he'll play him over here. So a lot of the different agendas here are going to be interesting to try to score. So let's say, look at this one here. So we've got Lord Capulet here. His agenda is more Capulets than Montagues are in the council. So you can see the characters have a little sort of faction icon, if you will. So, you know, Lord Capulet and Juliet are Capulets with a C. And, you know, Romeo here is a Montague. Now, some of the cards are neutral. And then some of the cards are both. Let's find one that's both. Here we go. 
the nurse here, she's neutral and she's a Capulet. So uh, the conditions of the agendas are going to be basically based on where the cards are placed. So if he's over here, you know, now he's counting for himself to have more Capulets than Montagues in the council. And multiple cards can score. So if magically the game ended like so, then these two would score because they're together and there's only one Capulet and, you know, maybe there's a neutral guy there. So he would score. So other cards will have an ability here. So if we look at this guy here, uh, he can play him and his ability will happen the instant that you play it. Now you don't have to activate the ability if you don't want, but he says, you know, move one character from the council to exile. So maybe we had a Montague in here earlier and we're trying to, you know, make sure there's more caplets. So I could play him. Now there's two caplets, which is good for this guy's agenda, and I can take him and use his ability to move a character from the council to the exile. So there's a small number of cards, so you can kind of keep in your head what's been played and sort of work out a metagame. Now the other thing, this is very important, that you can do after you play a card, is you can play one of your tokens here. So if we look at here, we've got some different uh, numerical values like so. So after you play a card, you can optionally take one of your tokens and put it face down on any open slot here. And what you're effectively doing is sort of betting or pretending to bet that that agenda will come true because you can also see that you have a zero here. So what you're basically trying to do is score the amount of points indicated on your token. So if I put this down here and then put this on Juliet, I'm betting uh, basically four points that she's going to be together with Romeo. So I can put that down here on this slot or this slot or this slot. Now some of these have modifiers. So if I put this here and then we flipped it over and I scored at the end, I get four plus one. Uh, you know, if you're the last one in here, you, you know, you get minus one of this spot here. Or I could even bluff, you know, and put a zero down here. And people think, oh, he's really trying to get Juliet, you know, next to Romeo. So that's basically the game. You play a card and then optionally put out uh, these different tokens here. Now at the end of the game, you're going to resolve any of these, any of the agendas that actually came true. You're going to flip the discs up and then you're going to total up all the points. So if I had uh, maybe a five over here and then I had my three over here on Juliet and these two, you know, scored, then I basically have five plus three plus a one modifier from Juliet. So I've got a total of nine points and you're going to add up everybody's uh, you know, values on all the legal agendas that have actually scored, and then whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, after everybody has played a card and we've played all the cards in everybody's hand, you do get one more round of token placement to, you know, tie up the end of the game. And also, like I said earlier, uh, this particular copy came with the Poison expansion. I'm not sure if the retail uh, copies of this will come with this, but this is a Kickstarter copy and this did come with it. So let me just explain how this works. This makes the game, uh, I think, even more interesting. I've actually played gone, played this back and forth, and it's, um, I kind of go back and forth on which one I like better because this kind of changed up the game dramatically, you know, which is kind of what uh, my mood is, to be frank. So here you've got your poison vial and your anecdote. So uh, if we take and put this on here, let's say we put this on there, and then we're going to reveal all the tokens here. Now, even if this guy's agenda would score, if he had this poison vial on him, he would basically be effectively dead and killed. And so that would wipe him out, and you know, effectively he's not going to score, and all the tokens on there are worthless. However, if he had equal to or more uh, anecdotes on there, that would basically save him from the poison there. So this is an interesting sort of uh, extra layer of bluffing, because without the poison and the anecdote, you know everything's going to be at least uh, you know positive or relatively benign with the zero, but with that uh, extra level of the poison, you know, actually killing off you know one of the characters. So an example is let's say you know people were betting on Romeo and Juliet, and then I had poisoned you know Romeo, and then he's basically going to be removed, and now Juliet's no longer with Romeo, or it may change the count of you know the total Capulets or Montagues in the different zones. So that's just an extra thing to consider and I find it quite interesting to play with that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Um, I'm a big fan of this genre of game. I love Love Letter, I like Coup, um, I like Lost Legacy, that's also a great one. I like basically everything by the designer of Love Letter, I think. This is a great game. This is uh, you know definitely a game that I think will, uh, sort of in the back of my mind had a little bit of 
trepidation about whether it would kind of chip into my collection considering I've got like Love Letter, Lost Legacy, you know, Coup and all that stuff. But this one's definitely going to sit in the collection because this has, like I was saying earlier, that sort of extra level of sort of pure deduction or sort of, uh, you know, smoke and mirrors that you can do. Now one card I didn't show you, I think there's actually two of these, is it lets you take two uh, tokens and swap them. And that can be really interesting because that's that can be pretty drastic if you're not being considerate that that card exists. <laughs> because if you go, oh, I'm gonna you know load all these uh, you know my big five on one of the cards, then you know you're just gonna get it swapped out because somebody's gonna be reading you and just really hose you over. But if you've got that in mind, and then that zero becomes a lot more important to sort of bluff and counter bluff. And you got the sort of you know that shell game kind of activity going on, but there's it's not just a pure shell game of you know mixing and matching and sort of you know just playing with people. You've got to really consider what cards have been played, what cards you know does it look like the other player is going for. So it has a little bit more of a lead time with the drafting and that extra uh, you know token placement above a love letter. But to me, it sort of retains that very streamlined, you know, efficient quality of Love Letter. You know, I compared Love Letter to Lost Legacy, for example, and Love Letter is immediately going to drop that out and anybody can play that, whereas Lost Legacy kind of, you know, tilts more toward that gamer side. This definitely has that more streamlined aspect to it, but you're not going to have those sort of, you know, aborted plays like you do in Love Letter, which can happen. I don't mind that about Love Letter. That does make it kind of volatile and interesting. But I think that can be frustrating for people too. They get kind of sick of that if it happens a lot. Uh, this isn't going to happen like that. You have a de basically a defined timeline of, you know, you can expect the beginning, middle, and end to each of the games. Uh, and then you've got still that rich sort of deduction squeezed into, you know, a five to ten minute period. So definitely I would take a look at this. And the one thing that was interesting about this is that we've actually found it very thematic somehow. Uh, based on the Romeo and Juliet idea because the th the instructions say basically you've got the townspeople who are sick of these uh, Montagues and Capulets and they just want to get rid of them They want to like, you know, you basically are sort of manipulating the two families together to try to get them to knock off their their funny business and then maybe you're trying to get the Capulets in power or you know, whatever in the council versus the exile and then you've got this sort of sideshow of Romeo and Juliet, which adds a real interesting twist to, you know, I don't want necessarily Caplets or Montagues or even Neutrals to be in the lead. I also got this sort of sideshow, you know, extra sort of subplot game happening. And they're just kind of innocent bystanders. So it's very interesting that a small game to me like this can, can capture that little bit of theme from that play. Uh, so yeah, definitely take a look at this game if you're a big fan of Love Letter and Coup. Uh, this doesn't have the super, you know, lying thing of coup, which a lot of people, uh, some people don't like. I really like that. But um, so it kind of fits in that nice middle ground of not being so volatile like Love Letter. And, you know, if you're not a big fan of the lying of coup, then I think if you haven't been liking micro games, this is definitely a one to take a look at. And this is definitely going to have a little bit more broader appeal, I think, across the board. Uh, so anyway, definitely one I'm keeping for sure. Thanks.